What is your favorite quality versus quantity example? Approximately 30 years ago I bought a couple of cooking spoons, each a solid piece of stainless steel. Paid $6 total. My mother-in-law bitched at me for wasting money because I could have gotten the cheap chromed ones with plastic handles for $3.78 total. I said the two I chose would last longer. She said I just wanted fancy things and thought I was better than other people. I'm still using mine 30 years later. Hell, my grandchildren will probably be using them. They are beautiful and functional. Edit, as requested, the spoons. I never understood that viewpoint, that wanting to spend a little extra for quality means you think you are better than everyone. It's not like you bought a Rolls Royce. They are only spoons. Edit, to all the people who think I am shaming Rolls owners, go look for something else to be offended by. I am comparing the low cost of upgrade in the spoons, a couple dollars, to the much larger upgrade of a rolls. This stuff is something that's always been stressed in my family. Most of my parents' cookware is older than I am. My roommate bought some super nice pans and a couple plastic tipped cooking spoons, spatulas to protect them. Our other roommate ruined them with metal forks, spoons because he couldn't be bothered to use cooking spoons he would have to wash afterwards when he could just use the fork he's gonna eat with anyway. We'll be buying another set of pans when we move into a new place without him. Quality is key but upkeep is nearly as important. Edit, many replies recommended cast iron or stainless steel rather than non-stick coating. I know those are nicer, but they were out of our price range as college students. Super nice is just in comparison to our other cookware. Edit 2, several people have given suggestions for cheaper cast iron and stainless steel cookware. I really appreciate it and will be buying some, probably from Amazon or Aldi. I didn't trust them because I'm used to seeing similar things at a much higher price, but your recommendations are appreciated. Friends. Keep the circle small. Edit, thank you for the two silvers kind strangers. Friends, do what works for you when it comes to friendships. I am older. Been a lot of places and experienced a lot. Time is the greatest test and your greatest teacher. Much love to all of you. It's likely that you will only have a small number of really close friends, but we shouldn't make a virtue out of having few friends. Keep your closest homies close but it's fine to have circles of medium friends, work buddies, acquaintances. We shall strive to be friendly with people and not retreat into a no new friends mentality. Agreed. I live in the Boston area and was born here, but I hear from new transplants that it is so hard to make new friends here, because the mentality seems to be, you form your core clique early and then that's it, no new friends because you don't have the time. So then if you move here and don't already have your clique and you aren't still in school, you're kinda stuck. I'm much more outgoing and I really enjoy making new friends. I still have my core group of a few very close friends, but a much wider network of medium work friends. Also, one of said medium work friends eventually became one of my besties and now her and her husband are godparents to my child. If you set up a mental roadblock of I only need X friends, then you are not only missing out on potential great friendships, but you are essentially creating a shunning situation to anyone new to the area. Tools, one quality screwdriver, wrench or whatever will last you a lifetime and can replace dozens of cheap tools. I like Adam Savage's take on this. Buy the the cheap tool first, and if you use it often buy a better one. No use in buying expensive tools which you don't use a lot. I call that the harbor freight rule. If you find you need a tool you don't own, buy the Harbor Freight knockoff, and if you use it enough it fails, then you know you use it often enough that it's worth it to invest in a quality product. If you only use it once or twice a year, you'll likely never wear it out, and it wasn't worth it to spend big money on quality. Edit, holy exploding inbox, Batman. Wow. Thanks for all the love, folks. It means a lot that so many of you have been genuinely helped by this tip. Many warm fuzzies. A nice, fitted suit versus three ill-fitted suits purchased from an average place. Same price, but makes a world of difference. Work. You will have some bosses that say, take any time you need, get your job done and be ready to work when you have to, while others want your butt in a chair at your desk for eight hours every day, no questions asked. I'm a software engineer for an application used by a call center. 
We had a major release that helps automate some of the steps that the call center workers would otherwise do manually. It cut the average call time by about 40% which we were really happy about. A few weeks later, one of the call center managers asked if we could remove the new feature because the employees weren't spending enough time on phone calls. This completely incompetent moron thought quantity of work was literally the only thing that mattered. I was like dude the whole point is to keep customers happy by limiting the length of their calls. He was ready to fuck over our customers and all of his employees for no reason. Edit, it wasn't something they were getting measured on. Although, I totally see where you guys are coming from there. I don't believe anybody was let go, but I think they did eliminate some open positions. Alfredo's Pizza Cafe vs. Pizza by Alfredo. For me it's working out. I do about 10 to 15 legit push-ups per set instead of rushing and doing 100 not legit push-ups. Edit, I do not mean that you should stop on this. I agree with all that you must increase reps or add on additional weight. My point is that doing your workout in right pose and right shape is more important than doing many but not in right pose, that's it. P.S. I also said that I do 10 to 15 reps per set, I do about 5 sets so count that up. People who can't stop talking all the time but their words mean nothing and people who only say a few words but they are valuable. Clothing. I used to buy so many cheap items of clothing because it was only a few dollars. Then one day I realized I had so much clothing but nothing that great or that lasted more than a few uses. It's so much better to buy a couple of good quality pieces of clothing that you can wear for multiple occasions than to buy a bunch of cheap stuff. A party. I used to party a lot, because I thought that's what fun was supposed to be. Now I just sometimes go to the parties I myself really like. Much, much better. Ducks. I'd rather have one really great duck than a bunch of shitty ones. There's been a recent trend of TV shows only having having like 10 episodes per season instead of 20 plus and a lot of times it's so much better for the show. I'd rather eat in one great restaurant once a month than go somewhere crap or order takeout on a more frequent basis. I'm the opposite. I've eaten at a few really nice restaurants because my family likes that kind of thing, and I have never found the food at $50 minus 100 person places to be worth the difference compared to a $10 minus 15 person place. Service is usually better. Edit got a lot of panties in a bunch with this. Some people like different stuff than you, it hurts to hear but it's the way things are. Not everyone who disagrees with you, just hasn't had actually good food, or, must be going to the wrong places, or, has broken taste buds. My mom's last days. Two weeks from pancreatic cancer diagnosis to her death. We were expecting to be able to care for her at home for at least a couple of months, she refused treatment. But two days after coming home, realizing how much strain would be put on us to care for her. My eldest niece was on the verge of dropping out of her final year of school to look after her beloved granny. I think my mom, always the stubborn independent one, just decided, nah. Not doing this to my family. I'm going to go see my husband. But honestly, the two days we had with her were all quality. Someone was sitting with her every second. She battled to speak at the end, but her kids and grandkids and her puppy were all there. We all got to say everything that had always been unsaid. When we ran out of words we sang to her. She literally died in her granddaughter's arms. Of course we'd have loved a bit longer, but for her quality was definitely better than the quantity that would just have included increasing suffering and dependence and indignity. My sister-in-law was terminally ill, she had suffered for a few years plodding along, but I think she had enough, she had a great day with my wife and when she got home she didn't take the medication she needed to live. She died on the sofa lying down chatting with my wife. We didn't find out till later that she didn't take her meds, my wife thinks maybe she was too weak to get them. I know different, she was an incredibly strong independent woman, she'd had enough and went out on her own terms after having a great day. Studying. I have friends who study for hours and hours but don't target specific material in a way that's effective. There have been tons of academic studies that show which kinds of studying are the most effective for retention so I stick to those and end up studying for far less time. 
Edit, worst studying techniques are cramming and rereading or highlighting the material, best studying techniques are slower and cumulative and involve rewriting the material into a study guide or flash cards, as well as doing lots of practice questions. Makeup. Can't believe no one else has said this, and I don't mean to shame anyone, too much makeup is disgusting, but you can get a good coverage with good quality products instead of having to reapply shit stuff by layers. Better to stay quiet and be assumed an idiot than to open your mouth and remove all doubt, speak little but say a lot. After a while people will begin to realize that when you do open your mouth it's because you have something important to say and tend to listen much more closely than they would to a chatterbox making the same point. Me in high school equals buys cheap earphones to use for the week just to see it inevitably break. Me today equals sweet wireless noise cancelling earbuds with pretty good sound quality and fast charging. I've saved so much money. Mine is small and might seem obvious, but breathing through nose versus mouth. You can take a lot more air through mouth, but your nose works like a filter that stops a lot of pollution and unwanted microelements. That might not be much, but I wanted to share it. One day someone brought that topic and I smiled upon that example.